I just wanted to get your thoughts on the game against Chelsea there the other day. Oh boy, where do I start? Eh? Where do I start? I mean, two goals and beat the you... champions. Like what? What's going super, on? Super, super Zaha. Haven't scored a goal in seven games. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, look, with, with Palace, right? It's the most Palace thing ever. Can't score a goal for love or money. Lose your two best players to injury, and you're just thinking, oh, look, let's stuff it. Let's go back to the championship, play Millwall next season. We'll have that. That's fine. But. That was the most Palace thing ever yesterday. We, we can't beat the likes of Swansea, Huddersfield and uh, Burnley and all that. And then we turn up against Chelsea. And th I think th the biggest lift we got wasn't even Zaha back. It was Spironi in goal. Because I, obviously, you know, we saw when Wales played Ireland. Oh, Ireland played Wales, sorry. Wayne Hennessy is not a keeper that fills you with confidence. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Anytime he's in yeah. the team, I'm thinking, oh, shit, we're going to concede. Um, but with that performance on Saturday... You know, right from the off, we went for it. And I went, is this the same Palace that I've watched the last seven weeks? What's going on? You know, because previously, t two minutes in, three minutes in, five minutes in, goal. One nil down already. Ten minutes later, two nil. And so on and so forth. But last, well, Saturday was by far one of the best performances I've seen from Palace since probably the Arsenal win earlier on last earlier on in the year Ooh, I never expected it but I thought I'll have it sorry yeah, Phil I know yeah. you probably don't want to remember that but to be fair I've had to take a fair bit of stick over the years from Arsenal fans so I have to kind of milk it while I can <laughs> um, but yeah I mean look you know <laughs> no but I mean look you know obviously the whole focus was on how bad Chelsea were not how good Palace were I expected that because anytime Chelsea lose to a smaller team it's always about how bad they are we saw that on the opening day with Burnley. Burnley hammered them. And obviously people were saying they got two men set off. So what? Even with those two extra men, Chelsea weren't getting back into that game. And it's the same yet, uh, Saturday. Eden Hazard went missing. And I thought, yeah. is he trying to be Balassi in disguise here? Because Hazard is a player that we all know can rip anyone apart. And I thought, he's, he's not troubled us. And that's why, again, that's a player that Palace allegedly made a bid for, which I think was to get uh, Mandando, but more on that at another time. But the, after the first goal, which was obviously an own goal, I thought, well, if it's an own goal, I'll take it. We can't really complain because nobody puts it in the net for us. But all throughout that game, if it's a, it just felt, I'll take a point. That's all I kept saying to myself was, I'll have a point. I don't want to win if Chelsea come at us in the second half and batter us. And to be fair, they hit the bar, but... When Zaha scored just before half time, I've never heard Selhurst Park that loud in God knows how long. Probably not since Hull at home when we uh, beat the drop last season. So, great win, obviously, because to get on the board was a massive relief. But credit has to go Sorry, to really. Zaha and Hodgson and, and, and some of the players that came back because there were players in that team well, over the assist. weekend that hadn't turned up. Yeah, Zaha was brilliant for, I think it was the oh, second goal, gosh. wasn't it? Zaha's goal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sacco got the assist for the for the for the Zaha goal, and to be fair, I mean, I could see the Chelsea fans in the pub when I was in town watching it going, "That's a foul." It's like, oh fuck it, I don't care. It's not a foul to me. Go on, play on. Exactly. Yeah, but Sacco, right, I mean, do you know what? Sacco went from hero to almost zero with that kamikaze oh. back pass right near Palace's goal. <laughs> back heel or something, wasn't it? Oh my god. Huh? Yeah, he's the back heel. I don't know. He, yeah, it was a back heel. He's such an instinct of player. Uh, just... You know, I mean... Well, what the thing is, you know, he was so instrumental. He, he was so instrumental last season that obviously when we signed him, I thought, Jesus, it took us long enough. But obviously with no Ben Teke, and to be fair, you could argue that's no big loss considering he's not done anything when he was in the team. Having Zaha playing that free role on Saturday was probably the best thing we could have done. Because him and Townsend look proper fierce going up against Chelsea. Yeah, I was going to say. Obviously, the problem is. I was going to say about Townsend is that uh, he looked rejuvenated now that he had Zaha back in the team. Someone that he can actually play ball with, you know, or look to get in behind Wait, and play no, through. I, I don't think Townsend's been. Yeah, I mean. Go ahead, Phil. I don't, I don't the, think Townsend's the Townsend has had. Now, Phil was talking there, Nate. No, well, I mean. 
the problem he has is that since Wilf got injured and then Benteke, Townsend was meant to be the one output we had for goals. Because we don't have Conor Wickham. I mean, that says it all, really. We Conor Wickham is still out. We've got Benteke out injured, which, to be fair, probably has been the best thing to happen for us this season because he's just not done enough when he's been in the box. We've got a young lad who's played one game against Man United and probably could have got something from it, Freddie Ladapo. But after that, there's no one else. We've got no one that can play up top. I mean, Bakary Sacco is just an accident waiting to happen. So I don't want to see him up top any time soon because it's bad enough he's still at the club. Just one thing I want to ask you. Um, what yeah. were your, like, obviously being a Palace fan, what, what were your thoughts on the bar being sacked? I know we were kind of touching on it a little bit before the video. And also, like, uh, what's your opinion uh, on uh, why? With with the ball, right? I felt it was dirty of Paris to tweet about stick together. We're in this together. We've got to stay together and all that. And then literally hours later, they sacked him. I can't agree with that logic because, granted, the results weren't the best. Getting battered by Huddersfield, losing to Swansea, losing to um, Burnley, and even losing to Liverpool. But even in that Liverpool game, Liverpool were not that great. Despite having yeah. all this attacking threat they have up top, up the top of the pitch, they relied on one mistake from us to get their goal. So I was thinking, we were never out of any game we played, bar the Huddersfield game. The Swansea game, we fucked up twice in defence, but that was it. Swansea yeah. never looked that comfortable going forward. And how so wasteful they the were board. against Burnley as well. It was really bad. Like they, let, they let the board out uh, that day as well. Well, look... Put it this way, what little hair I've got left, I nearly lost watching us not score in that game, believe me. But... I mean, with with the ball, I felt, do you know what? If we've been getting battered by Huddersfield, Burnley, Swansea, fair enough. That's not good enough because we should be taking points off those kind of teams. But even though the football, I mean, that football we played against Burnley was sublime. I thought, Jesus Christ, we're playing some proper yeah. football here. Because as a Palace fan, I'm used to watching us lump it 60 feet in the air and hoping it hits someone up top, i.e. Glenn Murray or Ben Teke. But bringing in Hodgson, obviously there's the romance factor, you know, Croydon boy, local, came through the club's youth system, which I didn't even know until I found out. It was like, oh, Jesus. But, you know, was Hodgson the one I wanted if the ball was sacked? No. But even even through those, like, 5 nil and 4 nil at United and City, I thought not many people are going to go to City and not concede more than less than four. Yeah. You'd be lucky to concede less than four at the Etihad this season. So, Unless I mean, you're yeah, Everton. I'll concede seven the weekend. <laughs> huh? Unless you're Everton and draw one one with them at the eight he had. But hey look, let's not focus on the uh, on the negative. So you are after winning now. Do you think you'll kick on from this now? Um well our fixtures coming up are quite favourable, so I'd like to think so, but again if if we turn up against Newcastle this weekend away, which is a bit of a tough place for us to go because it's quite it's it's never been a great ground for us in terms of results. I'd like to think so, but we've got West Ham at home after that. Then I think it's Tottenham. And then I think we play Everton and Stoke before we play the big one against Brighton. And obviously that's the biggest game of the season for us. And obviously if we lose that, I'll never hear the end of it. But there are fixtures that we've got coming up now because we had Man, United, sorry, Man City, Man United, Chelsea back to back to back, which was awful. That was just pure and utter pain, thinking we're going to get battered 5-0, 4-0, probably 8-0 by Chelsea, City and United, respectively. Obviously, we've beaten Chelsea, which was brilliant. And the performance alone made me feel we can actually get out of this because we're not, we're no longer cut adrift where Bournemouth messed up. And so the res- fixtures we've got coming up now are quite favourable, thankfully, because that mini little spell we had of some of the top teams, it was like, oh, God, I, I just don't want to watch football for the next three weeks. Can I just watch some other sport for the next three weeks, please? Because um, when you've got those kinds of games, you know you just know, you just know you're going to get hammered. And obviously, Saturday was completely against all expectation and logic. But listen, to beat the champions that well and to have Chelsea fans say that we were the better team, I thought, you know what? We're not out of it yet, but there's still work to be done there. So hopefully, with the Newcastle game and the West Ham game coming up, we can get out of this. But it remains to be seen, I would say. Yeah, well, look, you're taking points out out of uh, off the top teams now, or you have anyway today. You can take confidence from that going into the next couple of games now, and you'll probably get a couple of results. Well, again, you know, you know that, pe- people like that, that stems from having um, 
Spironi and Zaha come back because, as I said before, Hennessy, Hennessy cannot win or lose. Even if he has the best game of his career at Palace, he will still get slaughtered by the fans because he doesn't inspire confidence. Spironi has been at the club for so long. He's practically missed the Crystal Palace. He's been there since we were last in the Premier League, I think, in 2004-05. Yeah. That's how long he's been at Crystal Palace. So, him coming back into the team, it was as if he'd never stopped playing for us. It was like, oh, Jesus, Spironi's back. And even when Chelsea had those great chances that they squandered, Spironi had them covered. But Hennessy flaps at them. And that really upsets me because I know Hennessy, if he's a bit more confident, can be a decent keeper. Not world class or like top of the range, but he's not as bad as people make him out to be. He's just not confident. And that is a worry as a goalkeeper because if you're not confident, you're going to concede. And your defence will defense be confident. In front of him, again, and you know, you look at Saturday and Joel Ward, who I've slaughtered all season. I'm not going to be ashamed to say I have been quite harsh on him. He played so well on Saturday. I thought, you know what? That's kind of impressive. Fair play to him because this is the kind of player who's been with us since we got promoted. And I thought we need to start replacing these types of players who've been there. When we, got, when we got up, they need to start being phased out. And we haven't done that. Because Martin Kelly, as much as I somewhat rate him, he's not really going to challenge Ward for that right-back spot. So there were holes in the team that De Boer and Parrish didn't capitalise on. Striker being one of them, but also right-back. Because left-back, we got covered after Pape Suarez got a, uh, in the start of last season. So that left us really thin at the back uh, on the left-hand side. But... Uh, aside from that, because obviously Allardyce, when he came in, addressed that, and we signed two left backs to replace Suarez and uh, Friars. But with the right back position, no one's really been challenging Ward there for a long time. And Tompkins, he can play there, but he's more of a centre back. So that's probably why Ward's been getting slaughtered, is that he's not got that competition under him where he can think, geez, I've got to really up my game here. So with the games we've got coming up, as I said before, you know, they're quite favourable now, considering we had that mini you know, spell of three teams that I don't expect anything from. I'm confident we can get out of it, but it just depends whether we turn up like we did on Saturday or we completely fold as we have done since before Saturday. So, again, you know, I'll find out on Saturday. But hopefully Palace can now start to kick on because we start. We need to because we need to get points on the board as soon as we can. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I suppose we'll, we'll let the supporters or whoever's watching the video at least with comments in regards to how they think Palace are going to do and do they need to sign a new right back um, to, to cover Joel Ward as well as maybe a new goalkeeper if you can watch what I'm saying there so uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below uh, thanks again Nate for coming on yep thanks, thanks for having me